to the Woody Bench Book Club podcast. I am Maddie here without Courtney today because Courtney is out doing Courtney things. And by that, I mean like law school, like things that she does without me include law school. And that's about it. Um, <laughs> that being said, though, I do want to really quickly hop on here and say that for the first 30 minutes or so, the audio is going to be garbage on our side. Um, it's not awful. But it definitely does not sound like how my audio is sounding right now. So I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. It does get better about 30 minutes into the episode. So keep that in mind. Anyway, I had to cut out some of our conversations, which suck because I felt like we were having some really good conversations about catching fire. But that being said, I'd rather you guys not have to sit through crappy audio for too long. Um, But yeah, so I'm going to toss it over to Courtney, who is going to start talking about... uh, you know, catching fire. We're also together in this episode in person. So she's obviously not here anymore. She's returned back to cornland of Nebraska and uh, I'm still here in Nevada. All right. I'm tossing it back over to her. Bye. We begin back in district 12, right? Katniss, she's living off the winnings of the Hunger Games. PETA, he's across the street. Things are a little awkward between them, you know, they don't really know how to act, um, and Katniss is, like, trying to figure out what's going on with Gail, but so Katniss returns from the games, she's, like, a little apprehensive about hanging out with Gail, too, um, just because she doesn't really know where they stand, she doesn't want Snow to, like, hurt him, and then he decides to plant a big old fat one on her, yeah, because that's what she needs, and literally in the book, too, like, you don't really get this context in the movies, but in the book, when he kisses her and she starts thinking about it, like, romantically, she's like, I really just can't afford to, like, think about that. And Gail knows that I don't, like, want to have kids or start a family or fall in love. And I think this is the turn, like, for me, it's really early on in the books, but this is the point where I'm like, oh, I don't like Gail. Because he, like, I feel like he doesn't understand that up until this point she's been, like, totally based on survival and even now like she just can't separate herself from that so anyways there's some weird vibes going on between them too right and they've got to do their little uh their little uh tour of all the districts so they're gearing up for the tour right and somebody pays Katniss a little visit and that somebody is Mr. Coriolanus Snow, the president of Penn Way after he, when he's like no longer hot. Yeah. So. When he is no <laughs> longer shaved head Tom Blythe hot. Um, <laughs> he's an old stinky man now. He reeks of blood, Katniss says. Um, and he shows up there and he's basically like, look, sis, that stuff you did towards the end of the last game people be liking it and not in a good way. Um, So I really need you on this tour to quell the rebellion in the districts by proving to them and to me that you are in love with PETA uh, and that the reason you ate them berries at the end of the last games was not because uh, you're trying to start some rebellion. Katniss, she's going off on this this little tour of the districts um, and you know, Katniss kind of has this looming over her. She doesn't talk to Peta about the threat looming over them. Foolish gal. Uh, but she does kind of talk to Hamish about it, kind of as like a last resort, just to have somebody to help kind of guide her through. Are we being convincing enough, right? So all is swell. They get to District 11. Uh, and because Peta doesn't know about this looming threat, he tries to do something really honorable, which is give a month of their winning proceeds to ruin Thresh's family. And then Katniss can't keep her dumbass mouth shut. And so in a moment of, well, love for Rue, she kind of calls out to Thresh's family and to Rue's family and says some really nice heartfelt things about them. Um, And she also thanks them for the bread that they sent her in the last game what should be a sweet moment. However, uh, an old gentleman in the crowd started doing the whole, you know, uh, and he did the three finger finger salute here. 
And the Capitol did not like that. And so Katniss has to witness him getting his shit rocked immediately after that. Um, and then she finally brings Peta in on the whole, like, we don't sell this. We're done. Uh, and he's justifiably a little pissed because he's like, Katniss and Hamish, and this is a really good point that I think they emphasize in the book, not so much in the movies, is that, like, Hamish had to pick one of them in the first games, and he picked Katniss. So yeah, the, the tour is not off to a great start. They visit the other districts. Katniss gets an eye on some intel from the train and stuff about uprisings and stuff in the district. Um, but she's just, you know, scared out of her pants, like, honestly, truly. Uh, and then they end up at the Capitol uh, at President Snow's mansion for a big party. And this goes pretty much true to, like, how it's depicted in the movie as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Very grandiose, very um, over-the-top outfits, stuff like that. Katniss and Peta, they get engaged. They did that on the, the tour, right? It, it, they realize, Katniss essentially realizes that this is inevitably coming, right? Hamish tells them, like, there is no end to the game, so you don't get off this train ride. They're going to parade you and your relationship around the Capitol every year that you are um, a mentor. Like, this, you don't get off this train. And mm -hmm. so Katniss is just like, okay, well, we should get married because that'll sell the whole we're in love thing. And obviously, for a lot of reasons, it's really hurtful to Pina because he actually loves her. And he, she's like, let's just get married because we'll eventually have to. Mm-hmm. Dirty. Also, you forgot to mention that during the party at the Capitol, she meets Plutarch Heavensby, oh, yeah. who is the new game maker, because Seneca Crane has been... He's gone. Uh, Seneca Crane is no longer... They needed a new head game maker. Nobody wants to be head game maker after what happened in the 74th Hunger Games, because... I mean... Yeah. So if, you, if you mess up, you get got. So, like, yeah, what's why would you want to do it? Real bad. So Plutarch Heavensby decides that he's going to be the new game maker. He volunteers for the position, and he's been a little cryptic. He's been a little, mm, a little suspicious. He's like, "Hey, yeah. do you like my watch?" And he, he, you know, he shows Katniss his watch, yeah, and, she's like, and okay. it's got a Mockingjay on it. And he says something to the lines of like, "I have a meeting at midnight" or something like that. And she's like, okay, Capital people are so weird for meeting at midnight, <laughs> but I mean, go off, we'll I, watch, guess. I guess. Yeah, thanks. Um, she also, we also forgot to mention that she meets two people in the forest. Oh, uh, yeah. Who are from District 8, which is the, f the factory district. And they had, a, they have run away from District 8 and they are looking for District 13. And Katniss is like, okay, you guys are so stupid. First of all, District 13 got, like, blown to it's smithereens. It's not real. 75 Girl, years you're ago. you're crazy. Yeah. And they're like, no, we've heard rumors that it's real. We're on our way. They also show her that they have, like, bread that is ingrained with the Mockingjay. So she's like, that's so weird. And like, well, we're doing all of this for you. And she's like, what the hell do you mean you're doing all of this for me? When they get to the Capitol, too, when they get to Snow's house, she basically, like, gives him a look, like, was that enough? And he's like, which I would be shitting my pants. <laughs> I would be shitting my pants, He's too. so scary in the in the movie, because he's, like, yeah. looking down on them from, like, the balcony of the Capitol, and, like, does, like, the cheers thing, and he just looks at her, and it's just, like, the slightest, ugh. Oh, gives me chills. Katniss returns from her, her long journey her disappointment with scary snow. Um, and they're planning her wedding, which she's just super amped up about, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, they, they say, like, her wedding dresses come in, and she's like, oh, God. <laughs> I'm like, girlfriend, if, even if I was in that situation, I'd be striking poses in that movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is the coolest dress I'll ever wear in my life, okay? Um... She's not too hyped up about it. Pita's kind of a little saddy, too, with good reason. And Gail, of course, is being an idiot. It's his favorite pastime. Uh, Katniss is like, let's run away together. And then she brings up bringing Pita, and Gail's like, ugh, no. Now I have morals, <laughs> and I can't leave these people behind. 
he literally he's like so into it because she's like we'll take your family we'll take my family and we'll we'll run into the woods and he's like okay and then she's like and we'll bring Peta and hamish and then he's like actually we can't leave everyone here behind that's so selfish of you katniss okay and then she brings it up to Peta, and Peta's like yeah okay and she brings up bringing gail and he's like yeah that makes sense and this is where I just wish I could smash him over the head with a sledgehammer. Also, um, everybody in the capital and the districts, everything, are convinced that Gail and Katniss are cousins. cousins. Yes. So it is a little, it's a little bit more scandalous than just like, oh, she maybe not is not in love with Peta. If like these videos of her kissing Peta or kissing Gail in the yeah. jungle or the jungle in the forest. <laughs> Up here, I'm jumping ahead. Uh, in the forest, appeared. It would be like, oh, not only does she not love Peta, but she's dating her cousin. <laughs> all of a sudden, is a revolutionary, right? He was ready to run away, and now he he's all idealistic. To be fair, in Gail's defense, he was like that in the first. Book I too. know, <laughs> I know, but he's just like I feel like he's kind of wishy washy with it though, because he like he cares about Katniss, right? Mm-hmm. And I think we've already discussed that like his big flaw is that he loves Katniss, but like. He loves. He also loves the revolution. He's very idealist, idealistic. Whereas like Peta, Peta is just like one hundred percent in it for Katniss. He doesn't necessarily care about like all this other stuff. Not that he doesn't care. He just doesn't care as much. Um, and so Gail, he be doing stuff he probably shouldn't, and he gets he gets in a little bit of trouble. Um, but. So things in District 12, they're getting locked down real tight. And uh, Gail gets caught hunting. And he starts getting his shit rocked, if we're being honest. Uh, And this is kind of where Peta and Katniss are talking about potentially running away together, I think. And they hear something in the square. And Peta's like, don't look. Don't look. Run away. And, of course, she does. And it's Gail. And so she intervenes. She gets... Knocked in her face by the peacekeeper. Hamish has to interfere. It's pretty much almost exactly like the movies. That Except she actually her. gets, like, hit pretty yeah, hard. Yeah, she ruins her, her face. Her eye gets all yeah. messed up. And uh, not a good look going into your wedding, not going to lie. Um, yeah, because her wedding's supposed to be the next yeah. day. So they cart, they cart Gail off to her mom's house. And her mom's doing her little medicine things, doing a little snowpack ice stuff uh and Katniss is just distraught she stays up with Gil she kisses him because she's a fickle little beast and um then she goes up to her room and she this is what first she's like I wish I could like sleep with Peta because Peta helps me sleep but then she's also like but I'm picking Gail like I like I like Gail <sighs> whatever so she's supposed to get married but now we get to the the announcement of the third quarter quell, the 75th annual Hunger Games. Um, and for those of you, if you haven't read the books or watched the movies before and you're here for some reason, <laughs> every 25 years, the Capitol will do like some big razzle dazzle uh, Hunger Games just to commemorate what has happened, right? And the last quarter of Quell is where Haymitch competed. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but for this one, Snow has crafted, boy, just such a splendid surprise for our girl, Miss Everdeen. Um, because it's a best of season! <laughs> yeah. All-star season. Yeah. Um, all-stars! It is all-stars. all-stars. And <laughs> so... So the tributes will be existing victors. And this is really, I think this is where, like, obviously Snow is a very calculated man, right? He's been in power for, like, 65 years. Um, He's feared, he's revered, he poisons his enemies, like, bad dude, right? I think his fixation with Katniss, because of how much she reminds him of Lucy Gray, drives him to like lose sense of reason like he thinks he's still playing the game but this is where he really like kind of fucks up um because the capital and the districts they love their victors he's so blinded by his own hatred of Katniss that he doesn't realize that he's just giving exactly what 
would start a revolution, yeah. which is getting rid of all the people that... And, like, I get that, like, Katniss pro- poses the threat that maybe all the victors possess, right? Like, the ability that, like, there's, there's people in the districts who are strong, but now it's, like... Even the strongest don't aren't that strong because they like can't win against each other. But at the if if all went according to his plan, he still would have ended up with a victor who would literally be like the, the this is mega yes victor. like this is the strongest person who yeah exists amongst all of you. So they do they redo the reaping, which honestly is kind of pointless. Katniss. She runs over to Hamish and she's like, hey, if you get picked, or if Peter gets picked, you have to volunteer for him, please. And Hamish is kind of like, oh, Peter was over here an hour ago begging for your life, you little, you <laughs> little saucy minx. Um, and like, I honestly, I do love Hamish because throughout different parts of the book, too, he's like, you could do worse than Peter. And I'm like, girl, you couldn't do better. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Or he tells her that she could live a hundred lifetimes and never deserve PETA. And he's That must be, like, so hard to hear as, like, a 17-year-old girl. (laughs) Like. Yeah. So she, they do the reaping. Obviously, Katniss gets called. Nothing to be done there. Uh, And then, most unfortunately, Hamish's name gets called, which means that PETA can volunteer and there's nothing Hamish can do to stop him, which is exactly what PETA does because he loves Katniss. And honestly, though, I'm kind of like, you know what, aside from alcoholism, like, I'm pretty sure Hamish would have done okay. Okay, so now they're heading back to the Capitol again. Round two. Hello. Um, and this time the design team did not come to play, right? Cinna, he puts her in this, like, like, lava coal suit, I guess that's how I picture it. Um, and he's like, don't smile, don't wave, don't look at them, like, treat them like they're beneath you. And Katniss is like, yes, I can finally be myself. (laughs) Okay, my baby, Finnick O'Dare, he, uh, he's... From District 4, this little fisher boy. He walks up to Katniss with a handful of sugar cubes. He's acting real saucy. Uh, He's like, hey Katniss, would you like a sugar cube? They're supposed to be for the horses, but you and I are not going to be able to eat sweet things for much longer. If that happened to me, like, I would melt on the spot. (laughs) I don't care if I've seen murder. Yeah, (laughs) I'm folding immediately. And I love Peta, but like Finnick turned that riz on me. I'm done. <laughs> it's over. Um, and so like he says some like elusive stuff to Katniss, basically. Uh, I think he one he's he's being a little flirty. Like that's just his personality, right? And I think he's also kind of poking fun at the fact that like nobody, none of the other victors think Peta and Katniss are like real, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so Kenneth's like, okay, weirdo, and she tells Peter about it, and he goes, hmm. Uh, and then they go into the, the little circle, you know, Snow, he's not looking happy, because he never does. Uh, and then they start going through their training again to go back into the arena. Obviously, things are a little different this time. Um, also, great notable moment is when we meet Joanna. Mm-hmm. Um, girlfriend strips down to just her heels and gets in the elevator. I love in the movie basically how Katniss like is like, uh, okay, mm-hmm. like she's kind of a little jelly in the book, but like the face that she makes in the movie is so perfect for that yeah. moment. I just like that Peta's like read. trying to look like everywhere yeah. else. <laughs> I had read something too Our whole that off. like. She wasn't there in person when the scene was being filmed. Like, they had to, like, put Katniss in later. And she, like, filmed it really? alone. Yeah. Damn. I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> have to watch for that. The... And then they, she, they spliced her in. But she did. I still thought it was, like, so good. Like, no, you know, now that you know, there was, like, nobody there. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now we're we're at the tribute center. We're we're picking allies and such, right? 
Uh, and he mentions kind of bringing Katniss in on, like, who's cool, who's scary, that sort of thing, right? They do their interviews. Um, what? Well, okay. We'll start with the interviews, right? So they they make Katniss... Snow makes Katniss wear her wedding dress, which is honestly so evil and vile. I hate that man. It's the wedding dress also that was, like, selected by people in the... Yeah, when she yeah. tried them on, yeah. right? They they were like, here, let's get some audience feedback. Uh, and, like, I really... I don't know why he did that either, because that, there's no way that he didn't know that that wasn't going to garner so much sympathy from, like, the audience. Like, they're just going to be pissed at you. I don't know what he was I, thinking. Like, I know in the movie there's that scene between him and Blue, Plutarch where they're like, oh, we're just going to get the district people to separate her from that by, like, showing all the wedding stuff and then showing, like, floggings and hangings and just going back and forth to really like drive that point home but this doesn't fall under that this is so like <laughs> sympathy garnering and just makes more people upset but yeah. I feel like he at this point Snow's just so vengeful that like the things he's mm-hmm. doing aren't making sense for his goal anymore like yeah. honestly I don't get what I don't get is like if he really wanted Katniss dead like, just dead, without making a spectacle out of it, he could have just hired somebody in District 12 to, like, make it look like an accident or something. Like, yeah, make he it look easily like another could have killed her. Yeah. Yeah, or, or a suicide, right? Like, playing the whole, she was, like, sad about Rue thing, mm-hmm. or, like, couldn't live with it. But, like, he, I feel like he wanted to make a spectacle out of it, and he's so hateful and vengeful yeah. that he wanted to, like, embarrass her through her death. And that's where he just really, like, he got so hyper fixated on it Mm -hmm. that I think it destroyed his overall goal, which was to quell the rebellion. I I kind of wonder what made him so vengeful, because even in A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, he's not really like that. And I guess you have, like, the end of it, right, where he's, like, snow lands on top after he, you know, does something to somebody else. But Mm -hmm. at the same time, like he's still not even like there's like no reasoning for him to be so like we don't know why he's so vengeful even after a ballot Mm -hmm. well i think i think it's just because he's (laughs) he's that guy who had like that one girlfriend in high school that broke up with him and he just (laughs) it destroyed him mentally um so i i don't know i think and he just keeps making these mistakes so she gets on stage with her wedding dress um one of those messed up, right? And Sina has outdone Ooh. himself. He's like, give me a little spin, baby. And she turns into a mocking Jay. Mm-hmm. Epic. 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 Uh, and then Pita, of course, has to steal the show. All right, we're back. And with we, better sound quality. Yeah, I just realized that we were using the wrong mic for the first, like, 30 minutes of this. So it happens. Um. Okay, so Pita... G- Peta gets up on that stage and he rocks their world because he's like, yeah, this would all be fine if it weren't for the baby. He's such a drama queen. Um, And so then, of course, the Capitol, they're up in arms. The baby, what? Call off the game. Snow won't do that. Come on. Um, They go through their training, right? And at this point, they're like, hmm. Oh, you know what? Actually, I skipped over a really important part. When they're on the train going to the Capitol for the second game, the quarter quell, they're re-watching a lot of the footage from other mm-hmm. games, right? And they come across Hamish's footage from the 50th Hunger Games, the second quarter quell. And they're like, mm, should we watch it? Should we not? And they decide that they should, right? Because they can't find footage of the other quarter quell, and they're hoping that it will give them some sort of indicator as to how this one's going to go. So they start watching uh, and can and basically this quarter quell, uh, the, the fun new surprise was that they were reaping double the tributes. So it's 48 people going into the arena. Hamish is here. And Katniss realizes that one of her mom's very good friends was reaped that year. Um, and 
that Katniss's mom's friend who was raped is also what's her, Midge Madge, Madge. Madge Madge's mom's sister twin sister twin sister um so we kind of get a little bit of a connection there district 12 seems is pretty small comparatively to like a lot of the other districts but it just goes to show you one kind of like Katniss's mom didn't necessarily grow up the same way that she did she didn't grow up in the same I believe her parents were like merchants and uh those were like the kind of friends that she had right uh, but there's all these people that she knows today who have been like affected by the Hunger Games in a deep way, including her own mom, right? Because that was like one of her best friends. Um, also, the also the um, but the pin, the mock, like mm-hmm. the Mockingjay mm-hmm. pin that she got belonged yes. to her mom's friend Madge's aunt, mm-hmm. who was also in. The 50th yeah. games yeah. with Haymitch. So uh, there's a lot more like deeper meaning. And they, I mean, they just skip over that in the movies. It's just, I, I mean, I guess it really is just kind of like a subplot, really. And it, I think it shows a little bit more about like Katniss's mom and like all the stuff that she's been through. But um, so they watch Haymitch's games, um, horrific, brutal, just like all the other games, almost half the tributes die at the cornucopia. Uh, and Hamish, he goes to like the outer rim of the arena, right? And he finds out that there's like a force field out there. He teams up with Katniss's mom's friend, uh, and once they reach like the cliffs where the the barrier is, she's basically like, "All right, this alliance has to end sometime, so I'm gonna dip out, right?" And soon after, she starts getting murdered, and Hamish hears it. And he goes to try and help her. He can't. Uh, And he gets chased through the woods. I mean, they literally say he's like holding his intestines in his hands. Which reading that, I was just like, ew. Um, But (laughs) uh, he ends up being able to use the force field uh, to win his victory, right? The, The chick, she throws an axe at him falls down into the ravine and the force field sends it back up right into her head. Now this contributes a little bit more when they get into the arena, but it's also just kind of like another side of Hamish, right? They know obviously that he's a victor and like he drinks, but like, I think that really just shows why Mm -hmm. (laughs) he watched 47 people die for his games. And for the 20 years following that he 25 years following that he's had to send children from his district to go die. Um, so he, he really been through it, but, um, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good backstory in the books that we don't get in the movies. Um, especially with like other people's hunger games, you get a little bit more context. We get more context for Finnick too. He was 14 when he won his games. Um, one of the youngest victors ever, I believe. Uh, and that was in the 65th Hunger Games. So that makes him, what, 24? It's like 24, 25. Mm-hmm. Um, that gives you a good context, too, because they don't really delineate. Like, there's obviously older people who get reaped for the second games, but in the movies, they don't really discuss age. Katniss is still very much a child, while, while all the other vict- victors are, like, grown adults, mm-hmm. um, including Finnick. Um Finnick also got one of the and most so, like expensive gifts to ever be received during mm-hmm. his game. Oh, because he, he got received, a, he got, like, he got a trident. Tri- yeah, mm-hmm. he got a trident yeah. from the like the capital or something, and district. it was the most expensive. Like yeah. the I most expensive. Four. Okay, yeah, yeah, and he. I mean, like Finnick's such a lovable character. Like he, mm-hmm. I don't know, he's just a as good as he can be for the circumstances. So, like, I don't know. This These games are just really tough to watch, right? And then the tributes have a little bit more solidarity in this case, right? They kind of know that, like, they're going to be put in this arena and things are going to happen, but, like, leading up to it, it's not as, like, catty or vindictive, right? So the reason that they were watching the games on the on the train was to prepare. So this this round of training isn't very much like the first Hunger Games where they're like trying to um, maybe hide some of their strengths, right? Everyone has already watched each other's games so they know how they won, what their strengths are, which kind of ups the ante, right? And so Katniss, she's practicing with a bow. I love that 
they don't really describe the scene in the movie in the book, but I just really love the scene in the movie when she brings mags over with her and shooting like the little block structures and stuff uh in the books they say they throw up like bird dummies and she just shoots those out of the sky and um this is where katniss starts to really try and like pick out her allies too and of course much to Hamish and peter's chagrin she wants like all the weirdos uh <laughs> she wants virus and bd uh from what are they district three uh yeah. mm-hmm. so they're very like technology based she wants mags um people that don't necessarily serve like great combative functions Mm -hmm. in the arena but like but everybody wants her everybody wants katniss yeah she's a hot commodity Mm -hmm. hot little hot little commodity (laughs) um but She's very apprehensive about picking allies, too, because she wants to get PETA out of the games. And so whoever she selects, she wants to make sure she can keep somewhat of an eye on and probably over physically overpower as well Mm -hmm. um, so that they're not a potential threat to PETA. Um, So, oh, they also torment her. So we had the little red-haired Avox girl in the first book who was a runaway that Katniss had run into. Mm -hmm. They've added a second Avox this time around, and it's one of Gail's friends uh, who helped him in the square. And Katniss really struggles with this because she feels like, one, she feels like she's being tormented because Mm -hmm. she is. But also, it's just like Gale, like the guilt of Gale is like lingering around her and all of this. And I feel like at this point, like, Countess is prepared to die. She's prepared to die so that Peta can live. And like, I think at this point, she's given up on Gale, kind of, in a sense. And like, to have him lingering around through his friend as an Avox would be awful. Um... And it's just another example of, like, where Snow is just being hyper um, mean and just absolutely vindictive and hurtful. And he just he really wants to tear apart her psyche going into that. Um, But anyways, they 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 be starting up the second games. Right. Katniss goes with Senna. Um, They go to the arena and. She's like a little talk with her homeboy, Senna, and then some peacekeepers come in and they start beating the crap out of him in front of her. While she's trapped behind the glass. She, yeah, up. she's in the tube and they they start really hammering on my boy, mm-hmm. Senna. Uh, they hit him in the head, like they drag him out. She said there's blood smears on the floor. And I think the depiction in the movie is really good. Like just the 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 switch that she has to make right because she goes from being like devastated hyperventilating in the tube to like okay we got to get this together in the next 60 seconds and this is where the pond comes into play right so like a lot of the districts are in land locked places obviously district four people they know how to swim but a lot of people just they don't have like that's not like a fun thing they do on the side right most of them like work to live they have very strict rules and regulations curfews that sort of thing and so katniss through the pond and like the little shack has learned to swim with her dad and stuff like that and so when she arises when she rises up into the arena it's in a tropical area she says she knows that it's a jungle she doesn't remember quite how she knows that that's what it is um but she sees the water and she's like all right cool um so the cannons go off she swims to the cornucopia to get weapons and this time the capital has not provided like food any other resource it's just weapons at the cornucopia which is how you know they're trying to like get this thing going let's get it popping off so katniss grabs a bow and arrow she hears something behind her and she turns around who is it it's my boy finnick (laughs) my boy finnick and she's like oh I'm going to shoot you. And except he has. Except for he has a little Hamish bracelet, and he's like, guess what, Shorty? You can't shoot me. We're allies. So, yeah. So something that <laughs> we forgot to talk about yeah. was that 
Effie wanted to have everybody have something gold because Katniss has her mocking J pin and she's got her hair. And she wants to make sure that Peta and Hamish also have something because they're the four of them, they're a team. So she gets Hamish this flame bracelet, which I feel like you can't, you don't really see. Like to me, the bracelet in the movie, like it, I don't was like okay, that's just like an ugly ass bracelet, I yeah. guess. But it's like supposed to be flames, like you know, because of Katniss being yeah. on fire and stuff. Well, not just Katniss, but Katniss and the Peta. girl on fire. Yeah, yeah. and then Peta has a little gold locket. Yeah, I think in the book it, it's described as having like a mocking jay on it, but in mm-hmm. the movie it's just like some yeah boring ass locket. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, so with, with still images from the movie inside. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so Finnick flashes his little bracelet. He's like, "Look, bestie, you can't hurt me." And she's like, "Hmm, okay." Uh, and so he's grabbing tridents. She's grabbing bows and arrows. Some of the career. Uh, Victor's tributes are climbing up on the island. Uh, she shoots cashmere? No. She, 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 whoever the District 2 guy is. One guy. She shoots one of them in the leg. Yeah, Brutus, I think she Brutus. shoots in the leg, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. Or, and, and, uh, maybe it's... An, no, I think Anabaria jumps in the water. I don't know. Yeah. She's, she's shooting jumped, out yeah, I think at she's people, at the careers. Yeah. Um... And she's shooting a kill. Like, we're not playing around like we did in the last yeah. Hunger Games. They locate PETA. He can't swim, so he's just standing on his little pile of mud in the middle of nowhere. So they run off, uh, and Phoenix like, I'll get PETA. And Katniss is like, hmm, okay. Uh, and in the movie, he's like, fights with somebody, but I don't think that happens in the book. Um, and uh, Mags is kind of watching the scene. We love Mags. Uh, oh, sorry. Something else I wanted to mention is that the games don't start until 60% into the book. Yeah. Yeah. They go by mm-hmm. fast, too. Yeah. Um, really, it's kind of the buildup, like the buildup of the rebellion, the failure of Katniss to convince Snow, and then like the subsequent games and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we, I mean, like, we get to know some of the tributes, the other tributes of the victors on, like, a surface level. It's not really until, like, the next book that we really get into who they are. Um, but so now we're, now we have, we have Finnick, we have Peta, we have Katniss, and we have Mags. And they are going through the jungle. They're looking for water. They're not having very much luck. Uh, they're looking everywhere. I can't drink the salt water. Obviously, it's hot, it's sticky, it's gross, it's humid. Um, and they're walking, Peter's walking up at the front. And Katniss sees a little glimmer, a little something, something. Uh, and when she was in the training center with BD and Wires prior to this, they're like, oh, look, this is how you can tell when a force field is around. So Katniss recognizes that there's like a force field, right? And Peta, poor sweet Peta, just runs smack dab into that bad boy. And it stops his heart. And uh, for obvious reasons, Katniss starts panicking, reeling. Um, and Finnick, my baby, he comes in <laughs> to save the day. Uh, and what's really funny to me is, like, he goes to plug Peta's nose. And Katniss is like, oh, my God, she's trying to ki- he's trying to kill him. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, relax. And then she's like, oh, my God, why is Finnick kissing Peta? <laughs> And then she's like, oh, never mind. He's doing CPR. Yeah. And I would just love to be a fly in that jungle when uh, Finnick, quote unquote, kisses PETA. (laughs) Just etch that into my brain forever. Um, So Finnick revives PETA and Katniss. She's reeling. She's freaking out. PETA's like, hey, there's a force field there. Katniss like, shut up, idiot. Um. We get our, our sweet little baby boy Peter back. Oh, Mando. He's so evil. He's grumpy. Uh and then they they sit down for a little uh no, they get the spindle first, no? Spittle? What's it called? The the spot sp- spile. Spile. <laughs> Close. <laughs> Um, and let me just say, okay, so a spile is like one of those things you jam into a tree to get water coming out. And in the movie, they know what they were doing. They knew 
what they were doing with that scene. Yeah. Tell me they did not. Like, there's. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> I'm like, how can you make me watch that and not expect me to think it's, like, erotic? (laughs) POV, you're 16 years old. I Okay, Finnick, the way he was drinking that water, I'm like, girl. Finnick's age appropriate. Girl, I know. Girl. (laughs) Girl. When I close my eyes, that's what's etched onto the back of my eyelids. It's just (laughs) Finnick O'Dare drinking water from a tree. Why he do it like that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. They're like, make this as slutty as possible. <laughs> For real. They're like, they like film it multiple times. They're like, not slutty enough. We need more tongue. You're thirsty. You're thirsting. You're dying. You're dehydrated. <laughs> and also just a little turned on. And he's like, okay, I've got this. <laughs> uh, uh, so <laughs> after that m- moment that awoke something in me as a teenager uh <laughs> sit down for the night they settle in and Katniss takes first watch and they start hearing like lots of dings ding 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 12 to be exact mm-hmm. 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 uh and there's lightning there's lots of shit going on once the lightning stops Katniss is like hmm I have this ominous feeling and this fog starts rolling in she's like that's weird. And then it starts burning her skin and she's like, oh shit. Okay, they did not come to play. So there's acid fog in the air. She's trying to get everyone up and running, right? But Mags is old. Uh, Peta is legless. And literally just died. And literally just yeah. died. <laughs> um, and so her and Finnick, they're trying to hobble everyone through the jungle at this point. And it's... Not going well. Not going well. Um, Pete is too heavy and he can't walk. And so Finnick puts Mags down. Katniss picks up Mags and uh, he picks up Pita and they start running. But what they don't realize about this poison gas until a little bit later on is that it affects the nervous system. Right. So as they're trying to run, their legs and arms are all shutting down. And Katniss kind of got like, the brunt of it at the beginning like it's really fast acting Mm -hmm. with her because she was the first one to come into contact with it and so she starts to struggle to like carry mags and Finnick's like okay well i can't carry mags and pita and so homegirl mags just throws herself into that malicious fog Mm -hmm. she she do be doing that and uh we hear the cannon immediately after so she's gone and they're Which pl- is so fast. Oh. It's so fast oh. acting. Yeah, and the yeah. thing too, like, there's a moment, like a moment in the book where kind of like Mags and Finnick share a little like telepathy, telepathy. <laughs> uh, and then she just kind of jumps into the fog. And like in the movie, it's a lot more dramatic, where he's like, "Mags, no." He kind of has that breakdown later on in the book. Right. Yeah. Um. But so they keep fleeing for their lives, dragging Peta along, half working limbs. And eventually they make it to the shore uh, and the fog washes up kind of like on this clear barrier. The movie's great depiction of that. Mm -hmm, Like mm -hmm. the way it's Mm -hmm. described looks exactly like that in my head. Um, And Katniss starts, oh my God, Katniss starts dipping herself in the salt water. She makes a joke about like adding salt to the wound. Ha ha. Um, But it starts leaching out the toxins and stuff from the awful fog. And so, and it's also very painful. So she starts taking care of herself. She gets Peta in there. They start taking care of Finnick. uh, And he's not doing too hot. Finnick, one, is struggling emotionally and also physically. Like, he inhaled a lot of it. So, like, he can't speak and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, So they're soaking in the pond, right? And these, they just can't catch a break, cannot catch a break for the life of them. So they notice there's some uh, monkeys in the trees when they first walk into this sector, right? And they're like, these monkeys are all right. They're chilling. But then all of a sudden Katniss is like, I'm sensing a lot more monkeys around me. (laughs) And she looks up and they are everywhere. Hundreds of them. 
I think. Um, I just the picture it paints like every single tree, right? And she's like, they're there menacingly. Um, and so she's like trying to get Peta's attention. She's like, hey, Peta, why don't you like come over here and look at this thing and also be quiet and don't do anything crazy while you're on your way over here? And he's like kind of picking up on it. Um, but Katniss like has this feeling, right? She spent a lot of time with wildlife. She's like, if this, if Peta makes eye contact with these monkeys, they're gonna go ape shit. <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, Peta makes eye contact with them, and they lose their minds, um, and they're descending upon them like. All three of them are fighting them off like crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, Katniss runs out of arrows. Peta has some of her arrows. He's trying to give them to her and he gets attacked. Um, and then one of the Morphlings, curiously, saves Peta. And Katniss is starting to be like, what the hell's going on here, right? So they flee from the monkeys, the evil monkeys. They make their great escape. Uh, and they make it back to the beach again, away from scary monkeys. And Peta starts talking real nice to the morphling lady because she she's going to die. He starts talking to her about painting and stuff. And I'm like, ooh, Katniss, I know you're falling for him right now. That scene in the movie, too. Oh, after he gets out of the water and he's just sitting there looking at her and he gives her the pearl. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Um, so the Morphling dies. Mm -hmm. Then who do we see? Well, he, Peta's talking to her, to Katniss, and he's like, she, like, sacrificed herself for me. Mm -hmm. Why? So why would she do that? And they're like, that's just yeah. so weird. And then they and watch. And they talk about Mags, too. Yeah, right? and Mags also mm -hmm. sacrificed herself. So they're like, that's well, two people Finnick, already like, bringing him back to life right like mm -hmm. the yeah. name of the game is last one standing yes why are we doing cpr making sure people are surviving right. right um so like those are like three instances so far where it's weird and they watch the hovercraft come and take the body of the morphling mm -hmm. cecilia was mm -hmm. her name cecilia and then they're kind of just like, all right, well, I guess we'll eat some fish because, you know, Finnick is a fisherman. And yeah. Then somebody shows up. Who do you think it is? <laughs> Our favorite controversial queen, <laughs> Miss Joanna. Joanna Mason. Joanna Mason. Yep. Oh, boy. She is just a wonderful lady. Um, honestly, too, like, I wish we got more of Joanna in the movies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess she, her character plays a more integral role, I think, in the next book when Katniss is like all mm -hmm. pent up and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I just love Joanna's her also, she's also mentioned in the first book too, because she's one of the, uh, uh, she's one of the victors that Katniss vividly remembers winning mm -hmm. because she, she played it like real helpless and docile. Yeah. And then yeah. at the end, she just let those vicious yeah. fangs out. So, girl. so Katniss is very wary of Joanna. And when Joanna yes. and Finnick see each other, they hug. Yeah. And Katniss is like, what the hell I know. is going? She's like, Oh mm -hmm. my God. I'm, like what the heck? And also, Joanna is accompanied by two people. Mm -hmm. That's right. Our little techies, yeah. our little, <laughs> our little Elon Musk, uh, <laughs> Beatty, oh, and no. uh, Wireless. TikTok, 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 TikTok. Yep. And Wireless, they've they've just been through something. They went through. They had blood everywhere. Ugh, like it was like everywhere. raining blood. Rain. Oh, and they were terrified of that and well, okay. ran out and they're like trying to get themselves clean. Some uh, something else happens. I can't remember what it is to to them. And Wyrus is in shock from it. Like, cause she that's why she just keeps saying TikTok. She literally cannot say something else because something else happened to her. Was it the flood? Did they get hit by the flood? No, Maybe. the flood is in ten. No. So it's like, yeah. I don't know. I wonder okay, what I feel like. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, blood rain would suck. Like, that'd no, be scary, that would but suck. how is that the same as, like, acid clouds, acid vapor, and yeah. murderous Because they monkeys. thought it was water, so they were drinking oh, it. Oh, 
Oh. Yeah. And it's all it's sticky like a and plague. hot. Mm-hmm. Ew, ew. Mm-hmm. I feel like, I guess ew. that one's more like psychological. Yeah. There are some yeah. psychological sectors, right? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. Why is she be. She was on TikTok before <laughs> any of the rest of yes. us. <laughs> And Joanna, why she she knew. Like, Joanna's like, shut the hell up. Yeah. Um, and then it dawns on Katniss, TikTok, TikTok. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. There's. Uh, she doesn't realize it until she gets on the top of the cornucopia. So there's some stuff that happens in between. Then. Mm-hmm. Well, some of the other victors show up. Well, so they 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 meet up. They're kind of you know hanging out. They decide to go. Uh. Uh. N- NBR. I don't even know how to say the name. M- and Anobaria. 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 Anobaria, yeah. Mm-hmm. And the other careers pop up. And so they decide to. They also watch a flood come in yeah. from 10. Yes. Okay. And so they have like. They're like, you know, watching it and the, the waters come up to them, but it doesn't like flood them. Um, they go to mm-hmm. the cornucopia in the middle to try and escape the, the careers. The careers follow them. They get into a fight over there. Oh, wait, actually, no, the careers aren't there yet. They just, they go to the cornucopia because they want to get a higher ground mm-hmm. on what's going, to like, mm-hmm. see what's going on to try and find just what else is out there. Um, They yeah, get over there, and when the they're on they there, the, yeah, the frame at all? The career, the what? Are you in the frame at all? Yeah, it, okay. it's just because it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm just worried about he's going to be in this recording like half of her face. No, it's fine. It's fine. Um, But um, she, so, okay. Um, They go to the center, the cornucopia, and then Wyrus is singing. And mm-hmm. that's when the careers come and one of them slits Wyrus's throat. And then mm-hmm. they start fighting one another. And mm-hmm. then okay. they get to the top of it. And that's when she realizes that it's a it's a clock. Yes. Or it's right before and Wires with, gets um, thrown. Yeah. Slash. And she's with like Plutarch. That's what you're talking about watch. this entire time. And then Wires is singing her song. Yeah. And then yeah. Hickory Dickory Dong. Um yeah. and it's it's actually kind of eerie because they're talking in that moment, she's talking about the canaries in the mine and how oh, when yeah. the canaries stop mm-hmm. singing, that's how they know that they're in danger. And so yeah. then there can then somebody sa- then she says and then suddenly the canaries stop singing like that's what she says to herself and she mm-hmm. turns and that's when she sees Wyrus's throat being slit um mm-hmm. and then the the cornucopia starts spinning and then you have like in the movie plutarch's like let's see them yeah. tell time now and i'm like they're yeah they're still gonna they're be still able to going see but to okay i never got that either in the movie i'm like what is that gonna do well okay i think that the reason why though in the movie is that every single subsect looks the same so like okay. every single one yeah. has that tree so until it's midnight or noon they're they not don't they don't know what time it is so they don't know where to go mm-hmm. in the movie is just one big ass tree right so i'm like oh Great, you get yeah. minimal dizzy. Yeah, <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> yeah. Is that gonna do? actually really help yeah, them? But in, the, in the book, all of them have that tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they 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 go there also because um, Obidi also has the wire yeah. that he has, mm-hmm. and it's wire that he created. That is like. He knows how he knows about every aspect of this wire because he's yeah. the one who invented it. That's how I know Snow too really like fumbled the bag and he like just was not thinking with this because Beatty, we come to find out, I guess a little bit later, but like throughout this book too, he has created like a ton of the capital's technology. Sorry, I was trying to do that when you were talking <laughs> earlier. Uh and like he like he's truly brilliant. He created their broadcasting systems and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so the fact mm-hmm. that he was willing to send him into the games to me is just like he's really lost sight of what's valuable. Cause it and BD is huge instrumental in the next book with his special knowledge. Yeah, he's got his little trinkets, his mm-hmm. wire. Mm-hmm. On, they're looking at the tree, mm-hmm. looking at the wet sand. Yep. Things are coming together. Yep. Uh, and that thing is, they're going to try and electrocute the hell out of all of those career tributes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and Candace is on board for this, but she's also starting to think like, okay, but what happens after we right. electrocute the beach? So she's starting to like make her exit strategy mm-hmm. now. So they go back after the cornucopia is 
rearranged. They go back to the shore. And uh, this is when they start hearing the screaming, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Finnick and Katniss get trapped in yet another quadrant because they hear Mockingjay's Jabber Day- Jay's screaming. Uh, and it's the sound of Annie and uh, Prim and all of their loved ones, Gail, um, all screaming, right? And just like with the, they can't, they can't get out of that sector, just like how the fog washed up on one of the previous ones. They can't get out of that sector. And so they sit there for one torturous hour Mm -hmm. listening to the screaming the tortured screams of like all of their loved ones and this is another like psychological one very i feel like very much so like the blood like Mm -hmm. they these game makers just really need to go to therapy to be honest um they be concocting the craziest crap in there yeah um i think that plutarch carefully cultivated each one of these Mm. for a specific reason Mm. and i think that i think it was actually kind of like i think that this i think that this is like the best hunger games i mean obviously we have fucking two but like (laughs) this is like this is easily probably like the best one that they ever did like Mm. in terms of the hunger games Mm. like no i agree out of all of the all 75 of the ones that occurred like that's probably the best one well i think too like they couldn't have a standard Hunger Games either because these are all people who have lived through it before. Mm-hmm. They're very skilled and they have experience. So it's not like just sending kids into the Hunger Games. They'll die of making dumb mistakes or like they're young. So they'll mm-hmm. form these packs and stuff, right? These are people who have known each other for decades. And so that not only do they not provide any food or anything, they just provide weapons to try and get this going. But they also have like all these alternative means for getting rid of people, for killing people people because i think they know to a certain extent like some people will not be able to kill each other and so they're going to have to force their hands through other means yeah yeah so they're now we're commencing the tree plan now we are Mm -hmm. in route for the tree plan and now our our crew has shrunken and grown uh since the beginning here so as a recap we have pita katniss finnick we have Joanna and we have Beatty. Along the way, we have lost Wyrus and Mags. Mm-hmm. Tragic. Tragedy. So they're going through the forest, right? They're making their way to the tree to execute Beatty's plan. Uh, and in her mind, Katniss is like, all right, how are we going to do this? How am I going to split off so that I can protect Beatty? Because, again, after we electrocute the beach... Everybody, it's every man for himself, mm-hmm. right? Um, and like at this point, I don't know. I mean, like, I guess it would be weird, but like the fact that Katniss at least isn't more trusting, I think, of Finnick. Yeah. I don't know. There's obviously something larger at play here. Mm-hmm. And like, there's no way for them to tell Katniss really what's going on because every second of the games is being filled. I, I wish they could have at this point because I, I mean, like, it still ended up working out in the end, but like, I don't know. She she would have been on board at this point. Like she's in the arena. Yeah. There's nothing she can really do. I guess. I, I well, I don't know too because she's very afraid of snow. Yeah, I don't know if she would be. Yeah. on And board. she's still in his grasp. But like, I think it would have at least made her a little bit more cooperative with the whole Peta thing, right? Yeah. Um, so they get to the tree. They're doing it all up with the wire, uh, and. They need to run the wire down to the beach, right? Mm -hmm. And so Katniss is like, okay, me and Peta, we'll go run the wire down to the beach. And everyone else sees right through that immediately. They're like, um, no girl on fire. We need to keep an eye on Mm -hmm. you. Um, And she really doesn't like this, right? She does not want to leave Peta behind. Peta also, though, has been through a lot these games. Yeah. Like, he died. (laughs) He... You know, poison fog monkeys. He's got one leg. He's not doing great, okay? Uh, And so Katniss and Joanna start making their way towards the beach. And Katniss is still very wary of Joanna, even though she seems to be all chummy with Finnick, right? And, like, so on and so forth. Oh, I forgot to mention. When Joanna shows up with 
Wires and Beatty, she tells Katniss that she got them for, for her. her. And yes, she's like, what yeah. do you mean for me? Mm-hmm. And she says, or does she say or does Katniss assume that Hamish told her that she wanted them? And so she's assuming that's why Joanna brought it to her. Or does Joanna tell her that? I think she's. Oh, I think, no, I think Joanna tells she, her okay. that if she wanted to be allies with Katniss, that she would need to bring her wires and beat mm-hmm. Yeah. I think. I think Hamish tell. I think Hamish says that. Yeah. Because I don't think Hamish Katniss is the one working saying, behind the scenes here. Yeah. Because he's trying to get this a plan in motion. Right. Yeah. He really be doing the most in and out of the games. Um, Okay, so she starts trekking along with Joanna. She doesn't trust Joanna, even though there's some, like, questionable things that have been going on. Mm -hmm. I think Katniss can tell something Mm -hmm. is amiss Mm -hmm. at this point. Like, these aren't, obviously, these aren't normal games, but, like, these really aren't normal games. And, like, these alliances are coming a little too easily, too. Um, Mm -hmm. And not to mention, people keep doing things for her. Yes. Weird things, like collecting people that she has an affinity for and bringing PETA back yeah. to life when that Showing doesn't really make a lot of sense with an ugly bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, then they start uh, hearing some commotion, right? Uh, do they hear a cannon boom? Is that what it is? Um, um, no, no, they hear, no, they, are you talking about when she's walking down with Joanne mm-hmm. with the wire? No, the wire gets it tight. It gets stuck. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it, like it just tightens on, mm-hmm. like it's all, like it's caught on something. Suspicious, right? Uh, the careers also are still a looming threat. Uh, and then, in a in an act of surprise, perhaps, um, are they being attacked when she cuts it out? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she, they, they get attacked by the careers and Joanna. Well, okay. Katniss thinks Joanna is like turning on her, right? Because Joanna takes Katniss's arm and she goes, um, which like visually just makes me want to vomit. I don't know why. Like just thinking of how that would look. Um, and Katniss is like, okay, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Right. And so Joanna maims her. Uh, Joanna gets pulled off and, Katniss is worried about PETA. So she starts making her way back up towards the tree. Uh, and when she gets there, I believe Beatty's unconscious. Yep, Beatty's laying there. Uh, Phoenix around. And no, Phoenix's gone. He's gone. And so is PETA. Uh, does Phoenix, is, is it just in the movie that Phoenix comes back? No, Phoenix no? comes okay. back. Okay. He's, he's looking for Katniss. He keeps calling out for Katniss, Katniss and Joanna. Yeah, and well, okay, and Katniss is obviously wary after what just right. happened with Joanna because she knows that Finnick and Joanna right. are like this. She also hears mm-hmm. she also hears a cannon after the fact, okay. like, d- while during all this is going on. So she thinks it's Peta. Um, and then she goes and she finds Beatty, and then she thinks to herself, like, did he like? She thinks that he like. It's clear that he's tried to to kill himself. Like that's yeah. what it looks like from her to her. And that's honestly mm-hmm. what it looks like to me, too. Yeah. That it looks like he'd try to kill himself. Well, yeah, I mean, he knows what's coming down the line. He knows who their priority is, too, and it's not him. Yeah, so he, she finds him, and then that's when she gets okay. her idea. Okay, yeah, so... Finnick runs back, Finnick runs away. Um, there is no... Remember, remember in the in the, in the remember movies, who the real enemy is, Katniss. In the movies, he tells her that, but in the books, she remembers Hamish telling her that because that's the last mm-hmm. thing Hamish says to her. Yeah, so yeah. things have fallen into chaos. Beatty's on the ground, uh, and Katniss is like, "Well, there's a lot. There's an awful lot of wire here, and it'd be a shame if it went to waste because mm-hmm. it's not down at the beach. It's not going to take care of the careers." So in a moment of brilliance, uh, remember who the real enemy is. Katniss loops the wire around an arrow and she sends that bad boy up into the sky. She's looking for a chink in the uh, the visual mm-hmm. indicator that there is a force field so that mm-hmm. she can shoot it through, uh, which she successfully does, of course, because bitch has got great aim. And yes. uh, the arena starts 
falling apart, descending into chaos, right? Katniss isn't in great shape at this point. Um, turns out shooting a literal lightning bolt <laughs> through a bow and arrow will do some shit to your body. Yeah. Who would have thought? So she's just kind of laying there waiting for it all to end. Um, mm -hmm. And capital vehicles descend upon the scene. She thinks to collect bodies, right? Mm -hmm. Or to, to take her away because she's been a bad, bad girl. Um, and so they pick her up in just visually in the movie in the big giant claw thing. I always think about like the toy claw machines when I see those. <laughs> Um, that or like, do you remember the video of the lady that went hiking in Arizona and they airlifted her? And it's just it's funny. <laughs> yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I always think of that too. Um, so then Katniss, sweet baby girl, she wakes up on the ship and she's like, the capital's taken me. If they have PETA, I'm going to kill him and myself. Like, I'm not doing this again. She's, she's ready to fucking fight the world. Sorry. Pardon my French. <laughs> She's ready to fight the whole world with a syringe, right? She wakes up. Um, BD's there. He's not doing well, right? She gets up. She's walking around. She hears people talking. She opens the door, and who does she see? Mr. Plutarch. Heavens a bee. Uh, she sees our good friend Hamish and Finnick. And she's real pissed uh she's going for throats she's angry they're like sit down calm down she's like where's Peta?" which is also my where is Peta?" <laughs> yeah um and uh they're basically like hey girlfriend welcome to the rebellion and she's like are you for reals after everything that just happened yeah I and I will never forgive them for leaving Peta behind. Yeah. Mm -mm. Uh, then she's sedated. Yeah. And somebody comes to good visit night. Her, and we get the iconic. There is no District Twelve. <laughs> I just hate that he has to be in <laughs> anything. Um. <laughs> yeah. Man, every time I every time I like rereading that like the uh, catching fire it like it ignited <laughs> uh really yeah it, it felt like it ignited like the feeling i felt when i read that for the first time and then i had to wait for like two freaking years to for the, Maki yeah. to come out yeah and uh they just they bombed district 12 they said goodbye which honestly like I don't know. I guess it's a big like retaliation. But I'm also just like, I think it's really interesting that they'll punish an entire district for what one person does yeah. in the games. I mean, I guess that's supposed to like keep you in line as a victor. But like, really, then what's the incentive for people in the districts behaving because you send their kids to die? And if they do the wrong thing, then you like punish all of them. Yeah. I think that's just another point where, like, I mean, at this point, there's really no going back because the rebellion is, like, here and it's in your face. But, like, if what Snow really wanted was for people to stay in line, mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense to have no. done that. You know what I mean? Because it's just I like, agree. okay, well, you're going to ask them to send these kids to go die so that you don't have to, so that you can continue to live in peace. But if these... 17 year olds mess up then we're gonna blow up your entire district yeah yeah doesn't bode well no. i don't know it, no. it, well it's like it's so it's an act of rebe rebellion so they're going to try and like block everything lock everything down the best they can like they were trying to do throughout this book but i think it's very clear that it's over for them yeah. by this point. I yeah. think, too, like, it really comes to fruition in the next book, but I think Plutarch is probably the smartest person, besides, like, BD. Totally. In yeah. In this whole series. Like, Katniss, she holds a lot of power, but she doesn't necessarily, like, have intention behind a lot of the mm -hmm. things she does. It's just reactionary, and it's, like, who she is. Right. But, yeah. like, 
uh, especially once we get to the end of the next book with like all the political stuff going on like mm-hmm. Plutarch saw something in Katniss that I think like it, it's the same thing Senna saw too like right. I think Senna was also very very intelligent but like in the book too in this previous book we learned that Plutarch was one of the game makers he like fell back into some wine when Katniss mm-hmm. shot her arrow at them in the mm-hmm. first year and I think just that act really like he could see it all materialize mm-hmm. before him mm-hmm. but i don't know he uh, especially with the ending of the last yeah. book i'm like damn he He's was really playing calculated. the long game here yeah. yeah so calculated um okay so that's catching fire mm-hmm. i have a question when do you think that the plan for what happens in the 75th hunger games started at what point in time like that, that it became like a solidified a solidified plan, not just like an idea that Plutarch has, but like the the solidified plan. Like, That's a great when, question. and then who do you think he approached first about this, or who approached who first? Well, I think it had to have, at least the parts that we see executed. Like, I think Katniss might have been on like a short list for like people who would be good faces of the rebellion, right? Because of like all the sentiment she had already stirred up. But obviously they couldn't have planned, like, the extraction or, like, the the pull on the heartstrings. Well, I guess mm-hmm. I guess it depends on how, really, how much of a role that Plutarch played in picking this particular quarter well. Because mm-hmm. it feels much more like Snow's decision, but I think he saw it as, like, an opportunity to put things that he was like looking at doing into motion right because when they select the tr- the existing victors as the tributes that's where they lose like a lot of the, the capital support and a mm-hmm. lot of the district support um and so they that coupled with like the already rising discontent from the first games i think Plutarch was like, okay, we can really particularly capitalize on Katniss. And because these are previous victors, they're going to be a lot easier to reason with than like children who are being reaped, right? You can't, it, it's a lot harder to ask like a 15 year old to basically let themselves die to get Katniss out. Right. Whereas like these people who have been, vic- these other victors who have been victimized by the Capitol for decades who know how evil the capital is who have lived through the games they're much more willing to look look at mags right Mm -hmm. much more willing to like literally throw themselves into the fire to sacrifice themselves for the greater good um because they're mature enough to do that and because they've suffered so much at the hands of the capital right even the kids who get reaped i mean they they struggle with like starvation and Mm -hmm. poverty but not the same things that like living victors have so i think it was just like a i think they would have found a way to get katniss into the revolution regardless just because she really was kind of like the spark that ignited the flames that are burning in all of the districts but i think this was just like a really i mean the coincidence suck obviously because like they had to send winning victors back into the arena but i think just like each step throughout this book contributes more to like okay this is awful but here we can use this to like capitalize on the discontent we can use the existing victors to break the capital support within itself uh and then we can give a big f you to president snow on live television by blowing up his arena and taking his mocking jay out right so i don't know i think i think Plutarch was thinking about the potential for Katniss, just like Senna was right from the beginning when they saw her volunteer for her sister. And then when she shot the arrow in the training center, but I think the plan itself didn't start to materialize until the circumstances presented by the second quarter quell, just like they would have gotten her anyway, Mm -hmm. but it would have just been like, okay, we're going to run off to district 13 in the middle of the night or like, you know, maybe snow's going to try and kill you and we'll pretend you're dead and stuff like that. But, like, I think that this really gave them an opportunity to capitalize on what was going on and to break sentiments mm-hmm. with, like, the strongholds in the capital and the, the first couple districts. Mm. What do you think? I was going to ask what Kate thinks. Okay. Kate. Um, I think it depends on who you view as, like, the mastermind behind the quarter quell. 
because if it's snow, then it definitely goes along with like what you were saying, Courtney, was that he used that um, to capitalize. But I, I don't know. I feel like he definitely had to have influenced it at least like a little bit because otherwise things kind of play out a little too nicely. Um, especially mm-hmm. since like, I'm not a believer of like the quarter quells were doctrine long ago. Right. I just don't believe that that's true. I think that they just come up and they use what's best for that time. Um, and with Katniss, they needed to shut her up because she was the only female tribute from district 12. So obviously she was going to be in the quarter quell. Doesn't matter. Um, so I think knowing that, I feel like Plutarch had to have influenced them doing that to further his yeah. gain. Even if because it was just him, him like making Snow think it was his own idea. Oh yeah. yeah, no, totally. I think that's how you have to do all of this um, because Snow is so obsessed with himself. And so if you're like turning him into you know, making him think that this was his idea. I think that goes a long way. And you just see Plutarch in um, Mocking Jay really play people to get what he wants. And I think, yeah, I think the second the 74th Hunger Games ended and Seneca Crane was killed, he knew exactly what he had to do to get what he wanted. Yeah. Who do you think was the first tribute to know? Mm. I think it was, I think, well, I think Hamish had to do a lot of the, Mm -hmm. I think Hamish and Plutarch obviously were in communication beforehand, right? Mm -hmm. I think it's something that they had been looking at doing for like a long time. Uh, I think probably Hamish's friend who the drunk guy who ended up dying mm-hmm. pretty early on would probably have been brought in to, because they seemed like best friends. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think too, like it depends on how much they know about what snow is doing to Finnick. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think if they knew the extent of it, then they probably knew that they could get him on their side, especially with like Annie mm-hmm. and stuff that we later come to learn. Um, I don't know. I feel like it would be kind of hard for them to gauge whether or not they trusted Joanna just because her victory hinged upon her falsities, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, and like as mad and angry as she is throughout the second games, like you never know when a, a rabid dog will turn and bite mm-hmm. you instead, right? Um, so I don't know. I would say it's pro- it was probably some of like the older victors that like Hamish knew really well and was like personally mm-hmm. friends with. Unfortunately, they're the ones who like ended up dying pretty early on. Right. Um, but I think probably like BD too, at some point. Um, Mags for sure. I mean, she can barely talk anyway, so it's not like she's gonna sell anybody out. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What do you think? I think um, I think it Joanna must have been early on. First. You think it was B? I think Joanna had to have been early sense. on as well, because like she is very angry, but she doesn't really take out her real anger on Katniss. Like she does, she takes out a lot of anger on Katniss, but it's more like projection anger than mm-hmm. it's like actual like Legit. physical anger. And but she's I very anti capital I think is the first. Per- yeah. Um, but I think BD was the first person mm-hmm. that they had to not even convince because he was on board. And that's why he, I mean, he's so technologically savvy that like you have to imagine mm-hmm. that his, I mean, it's true that his, some of his technologies were used in the arena and that's why they were able to escape is because they had BD his on, on his side. Yeah. And even mm-hmm. like we have Plutarch's the first person who hints at, at, what will happen right because he shows her the mocking jay watch yeah. and he tells her that it'll be at midnight which is supposed to mean like oh yeah no i was giving you a hint about what the arena was gonna be and yeah she's like uh okay. yeah well that didn't work thanks <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but uh bd's the first person who tells her 
to look for a chink in in the armor. Oh, mm-hmm. that's true. Like he that and Wires are laughing about how she can't see it, and she's like, "What are you guys talking about?" And they're like, "Look closely yeah. at that, and you can see that there's like a like a a wave, and you can see it's just yeah. for a split second, but that's where you want to hit yeah. because that's the weakness in the. Mm-hmm. You know, perhaps it's also a metaphor, Katniss. <laughs> I think, honestly, too, I think in terms of the rebellion, like, BD is equally as valuable as Katniss is, right? Like, face-wise, face value-wise, galvanizing the troops, she's obviously very useful, but, like, he has Mm -hmm. basically built the capital. Like, he's so knowledgeable. And, I mean, like, so the fact that they got away with him, too, was pretty Mm -hmm. impressive. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just used again to, like... Mm -hmm. They use his brain. But, um, yeah, no. I, the way Katniss felt when they left Peta behind, me too, girlfriend. <laughs> no, for real. At least they got Finnick, though. Um, yeah. let me see. She's got, she's got to pull out her notes app. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, my only note was who was the first person who hinted at it. And it, I'm pretty sure. Well, it was definitely Plutarch who was the first person it was who hinted at it. But, B yeah. and Wires are the first people who actually, I think, mm-hmm. find the scene. I also think that they, BD had to have been the first person to know because I think that he is, without him, none of it could have been possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure they needed him, like, because <sighs> Plutarch is very good, like, strategically, mm-hmm. but, like, that only mm-hmm. helps if you're working off of a good knowledge base, right. which is BD mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. case. God, I can't wait for the next book because I hate President Coin <laughs> with her bob. Me too. Dumbass oh bob. Oh my god. Fuck ass yeah. bob. Ugh. They, they casted her perfectly, Perfect. by the way. Yeah. I yeah. could not hate a bitch more. <laughs> uh, Julian more. I think they casted Finnick perfectly too, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Lots of sexy. Great casting. My God. And I love Joanna. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. she's. I, you know what? Uh, the, I'm gonna be really upset when we get to the next one because I feel like they just totally they didn't like character assassinate Joanna, but she's barely in. She's barely in it. And, they, and her and Katniss have barely. such like a interesting friendship and the progression yeah. of their relationship yeah, throughout the books is so. I don't know. Katniss has like no friends, and then here she has a friend, right? Mm-hmm. And then the movies are like, no, Katniss well, is a loner. Well, yeah, and like, so Katniss has like friends like Gail, right? Which he's yeah. more of like a cousin <laughs> that likes to kiss her, and yeah. um, and then she has like other people, like acquaintances, right? Like Madge, like mm-hmm. the people in District Twelve. But I feel like Joanna really gets her too because Katniss has like yeah. this kind of like rage behind her yeah something that like joanna has too um and like an anger Mm -hmm. even though can katniss like manifests it differently like joanna just gets her on such a different level than most people and like right like pete is so loving and like at least before Mm -hmm. what happens to him i don't think he can relate as much to katniss like her and joanna just really and people weren't expecting much from joanna either and then she ended up winning her game so i think it's Mm -hmm. just like I, I, and she helps kind of like channel her rage into something productive when they're in District mm-hmm. 13. And I feel like they just really like gloss over that in the movie. They don't even talk about it in the movie. It's basically no. Joanna just is like, here, get on the shipment. I also really love in the movie how they did the interviews with everybody beforehand. Because mm-hmm. in the book, they're describing like what, like, there's no actual dialogue. It's just describing what yeah. the person had said in yeah. their interview. And I think that it really captured, like, how everybody was feeling. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) I think it was doing... (laughs) Hi, Mando. Hi. Um, But yeah, I think it it was... It did a really good job of capturing just the emotions that Joanna Mm -hmm. was portraying that Katniss was picking up. Yeah. And, like, Beatty's intelligence was really there, because he's... Mm -hmm everybody's questioning the games like every single Everyone. one of the victors that are up yeah. there are like what the heck and bd's like well surely the laws were written by men they can be, be unwritten. unwritten by men 
Um, mm-hmm. And Joanna's just like, I was supposed to be able to live my life in peace, but instead yeah. you guys drag me out again for one of these. And Caesar's just sitting there like this the whole time. Yeah. He's like this. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shut up please stop <laughs> well too like the district is still terrorized or the capital is still terrorizing so many of their victors through like forced mm-hmm. prostitution and yeah. even after they win their their yeah hunger games they still are used by the capital yeah for different, different ways Finnick is used yeah. physically BD's used mentally Katniss is used Katniss would would have been used physically, physically, but she also would have been used for entertainment purposes. Yeah, with her relationship with Peta. Yeah. Well, I thought well, something too in the books. Like this is way back to like when they're on their victory tour, but they like expect them to like pick up like a hobby or something or like a talent. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, so these people just murdered each other, and you want me to get on stage and like tap dance? And right. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> and Peta. Peter does paintings of like the arena because he like can't get it out of his head and they're beautiful but Katniss is like never show me these again right. she yeah. she tells him that she hates it he's like really she goes they're beautiful but I hate them yeah, yeah. oh yeah and then there's Maddie sent us this excerpt from the book but there's one scene where they're like Katniss is like I'm gonna go sleep in Peter's bedroom yes. again oh, yeah. I miss the warmth of his body and I'm like Girl. 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 There, I, okay. Girl. I feel a little weird speculating this publicly because they're 17 years old. But I have, Girl. I have always thought that they. Yeah. Otherwise, why would she feel so guilty about like kissing Galen's? Stuff? Yeah. I'm well, like, like yeah. no, they, they be doing it. Yeah. And also like, they be doing she it. She feels guilty for kind of like leading on Gail a little bit because mm-hmm. she's like, well, I've already done like all this stuff with Peta, and we think that she's talking about the game but i i think that they were hooking up yeah. or they had to have hooked up i think they specifically ho- hooked up the night before the actual 75th hunger games yeah. they they be trauma yeah. bonding too. yeah i also love oh, him yeah. like he's like if it weren't for the baby i'm like is katniss like wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> yeah there be a baby? well um that's another thing too is that like when she like everybody obviously i mean like they're star cross lovers or whatever but everybody's obviously convinced that they're doing it because every he's like, they believe I, that she is she, gonna have a baby right and then something mm-hmm. else that we, for, that we didn't really touch on but in the books oh, the- her pregnancy is like part of the reason why she's like able to take it so lightly in the arena yeah mm-hmm. where like everybody because like, everybody thinks that she's pregnant yeah like finnick makes yeah. jokes about it too i think he knows but yeah. he's like eh, gotta protect the baby huh right but like that's what we used they to say also to use it to like their soccer. advantage for play they get a bunch of they get bread they like consistently get like loaves of bread from from the peeps the people out there and that yeah. bread is supposed to symbolize what time certain things are going to happen at and mm-hmm. like the only person who knows is Finnick and like yeah Ugh. what a good book i just it's i such loved, a good book i loved this book when i read it 15 yeah. it's 13 so, years oh. ago but i love it Net, so 14 years long. ago so long ago Ugh. but i That's love so it gross. just as much now as i did that it's probably one of the yeah. best books ever written i feel yeah. like it really speaks volumes too when you write a series and like the second book is better than the first because a lot of times like yeah you'll get a really big build up and it'll drop off on the second one they'll pick up back in the third but this one just comes hot out the gate with the second book like the first yeah. book is great don't get me wrong love it it sets up the universe well this one is just so so good. In the movie, the is movie's so good. incredible. Like, both the movie and the book are some of the best, the best. media mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Made. I agree. There was yeah. no sophomore slump. She just Mm-mm, went nope. back at it. Certainly not. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure it, this book is a five. In case you were wondering. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yes, it's a five. For sure. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking forward to reading Mockingjay. It has been many years, many a year since oh, hi, <laughs> since I read Mockingjay. Um, obviously since I, since I read any of these, but mm. Mockingjay, obviously In particular, yeah. And, and like I've mentioned mm. before, like I have convinced myself that I didn't read it, but then I watched the movies and I knew exactly what. Was yeah, <laughs> so, like, I knew that like 
I had to have watched the movie and read the book at some point mm-hmm. in time. I just literally yeah, do not remember. remember. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm hyped for the next book. I love talking about like all my political theories for that one. And yeah. Mm. The next one is really the next one is so good. <laughs> Two sides of so the same good. now. Uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Well, do you have anything you want to add, Kate? Anything you want to talk about? No. Um, I think next, maybe for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I think we should talk about least favorite fan theories. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll be talking about it's, those for sure. I'm I'll seeing write it down so I don't forget. Crazy ones that I'm just like, no. I okay, so just a little bit on that. Uh, cuz I was reading uh I was on TikTok. I was reading. <laughs> I was on TikTok and there was these girls. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> video. No, um I was watching TikTok and there's like this girl who was talking about um some theory she had but it's like a question that was answered in a ballad of songbirds because it's about it's about ballad and songbirds yeah but it was like or actually maybe it was about i don't remember or whatever it's about one of the books but the it's one of those ones that is like actually answered in the book Mm -hmm. like if you read the book you know what's gonna happen and she Mm -hmm. was fighting for her life in the comments against people (laughs) who read the book because they're like dude just read the book like you can get the answer you want it's right there and she's like well, in my opinion, I don't wish like, I don't read. And in my opinion, a good movie should include things. You shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to read the book in order to understand the movie, which I get because as somebody who's a Harry Potter fan, like I get it. Like those movies kind of suck if you have not read the books but, because so. you're missing so much context. But this little nitpicky thing that you think that you've like poked a hole like it's not it's like she's like thought that she poked a hole into the story but this but it's answered in the book so like you can't poke holes in stories if you haven't read the book and you don't Mm -hmm. the hole is not actually there and also even if you don't read buy a goddamn audiobook listen to it Mm -hmm. (sighs) do other things yeah yeah infuriating yeah i can't wait for that Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. i'm gonna have to collect some things on tiktok yeah. Mm-hmm. Just type in like God. stupidest fan <laughs> theories, Hunger Games. Yeah. <laughs> Middle school fan theories, yeah, Hunger it- Games. <laughs> Finnick is actually gay for PETA. And you mm-hmm. can see that because they kiss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Katniss is, um, is homophobic because she didn't like that Finnick kissed PETA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um oh. Joanna is definitely coming onto Katniss the entire time. Yeah, that's why she's naked in the elevator. Yeah. Yeah. She's so off the She's trying to come onto Katniss. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so anyways, Katniss tune in pregnant, next time. That's why yeah. Kita Hello. said yes. <laughs> <laughs> she actually did lose the baby. Yeah. She actually was <laughs> pregnant. P- uh, Peta told us. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I don't remember in the book if somebody asks her about the baby. I'm assuming they ask her about the baby quite a bit in the book. But um in the when they go to I think it's district eight, right? When they go mm-hmm. there and they're like, What happened to the baby? And she's like, I lost oh, in the it. Hospital? And I'm like, dude, she got electrocuted. <laughs> no, for like and the baby got fried. Didn't you guys like, watch her was- like drink or like inhale poison? Yeah. Like <laughs> No, for real. Like she was under the most like stress ever. Right. As a- Joanna literally woman. cut her tracker out of her arm. <laughs> yeah. But no, her baby's fine. Yeah, that baby's <laughs> not going to make it through that. Yeah. She <laughs> had no, like, uh, prenatal care. Yeah. Totally good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, I think that concludes Catching Fire. Yeah. If you uh, awesome. want to know what next week we're doing mocking jay obviously oh, yes. and we mm-hmm. will be in person all of us we will mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we will girls trip Woo. hello um but yes yeah, so we're doing mocking jay next week and um, that will be really fun we could take it will be very fun <laughs> He will not be joining us. No, it's a girls but, trip, though. So, no dogs. Yeah. Oh boy. Girls only. Um, 
that being said, if you want to know what the girl A's are up to when we're not on here talking about books to you, you can check out our Instagram, Pinterest, or TikTok. Maddie's got some good videos on there. Uh, you can also check out our Etsy store if you want to buy a bookmark, support the podcast for those of you listening. Thank you. Um, for those of you watching, thank you. Please like, comment, subscribe the whole nine yards. We really appreciate all the support going into this new year. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. Got some good things in the works. Um, that being said, though, I think there's really only one thing left to say. <sighs> Happy, Happy reading. reading. Happy reading. <laughs>